So welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to stop buffering on your Fire TV stick. So if your Fire TV stick is constantly buffering, lagging, freezing when you're trying to stream your favorite shows and movies. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to stop the buffering step by step. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. So first things first, buffering is often a sign that your internet speed isn't cutting it. So let's test it out. So the first thing you wanna do is go to your app store. You wanna download a speed test app. I prefer to use Analyti, but let me know in the comment section what you guys use. Analyti has been around for a while. Sometimes it goes away from the app store, sometimes they pull it back. So depending on when you're catching it, but like I said, any speed test application will do. You want to do a speed test and what you're looking for guys you want to get at least 15 to 25 megabits per second that's what's required for hd streaming if you're streaming 4k at least 30 but for the most part if you have these speeds you should be fine now if you don't have these speeds either one or two things can be happening either you're not paying for over 30 megabits per second on your plan or your fire tv stick is in a bad location so Another way to check this, of course, I would grab a mobile phone or something else that I can move around with, grab a phone, connect it to the same network, see what speeds you're getting. If you're getting a higher speed, that just means that your Fi TV stick is in a bad location. And you should definitely consider repositioning your Fi TV stick. All right, so the next thing you can do, and I'd really suggest it, is if you're connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network, consider connecting to a 5G network. It's gonna give you better speeds overall. So you can see um, most networks are just gonna be labeled like this, but for me, I do have it separated where I have Mojo 5G and I have Mojo. For the most part, 5G network is gonna give you a lot better speeds than the 2.4 gigahertz network. So the next thing we wanna do is turn off your background applications and processes that's running. So you guys might not know this, but when you open an application, let's say you open Kodi, you open Netflix, you open YouTube, you get out of them, you go to something else, nine times out of 10, that app is still running in the background and it is consuming your memory. Memory or RAM along with your CPUs, what's gonna make your device run a lot faster, run a lot smoother. So if you have a lot of apps just clogging that down, it is, gonna kill your performance. So a couple ways to do this. I prefer using an app called Background Apps and Process List. When you open an application, you're gonna see a list of the applications that's currently open. Uh, you do have the option to refresh it. You have the option to close multiple. Right here, you can switch between user applications and system applications. You wanna stick with the user applications because more than likely the system applications are there to keep your system running stable. So what you see here is all the apps that I have running in the background of my device. And let me just click on downloader, for instance. If I click on that, I can just force stop. When I go back, you see downloader disappear. Fubo TV is the same thing. I can force stop Fubo go back and Fubo is gone. So this is kind of a manual process. You can go to the option to close all applications, but it will bring you to that same screen right here where you have to go through and kill all of them. They do have apps that does that automatically in the background. I'll go ahead and list a video that I did showing you one that worked really well, clearing all the background apps and processes. The other option, and this is a hidden trick, you want to adjust developer settings. Yes, there's an option in developer settings that clouds up your memory that most people don't know about. So in order to adjust the setting, I'm gonna go to my settings. And you wanna go to My Fire TV. You're gonna go down to developer options. Click on that. ADB debugging. If you're not using it, I know some applications like Mouse Toggle uses it, but if you're not using ADB debugging, it is using memory in the background guys go ahead and turn that off trust me it is going to help freeing up space in the background and helping your device run a lot faster all right so the next thing and a lot of folks probably want to get away from this is to use a wired network connection so in my experience most of the time you having issues 
with buffering, with device slowing down, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be network related, guys. It's gonna be because your Wi-Fi is slow, because you're in a bad spot, because you're using the wrong network, because your microwave is interfering with the 2.4 gigahertz, which I've seen. So a couple things can go wrong. One way to skip that guesswork is to get an ethernet to USB adapter. So ethernet to USB adapter is gonna give you reliable, stable network. It is gonna work really well. But one thing you should know about the ethernet to USB adapter for the Fi TV stick is that it's gonna cap at 100 megabits per second. And this is because of bottleneck with USB. Most USB is not gonna give you speeds over that with an ethernet adapter, but you can at least get stable, reliable connection. So for this, you'll need an OTG adapter, you need an ethernet to USB adapter, of course, and of course you need an ethernet core to run to your router. Once you get this plugged in, you should see a link light on your device. It is gonna give you stable speed, do a speed test, and like I said, you should get around 100 megabits per second, and for a lot of people, this is the sure fix. So another option that a lot of people probably is gonna avoid doing again is reduce video quality. So let me go over to YouTube and kind of show you what I'm talking about. For most videos, for most people, you want the best quality. You bought this device, it's a 4K device, you have a 4K TV ready to be blown away. But if your network is not keeping up with this, your only option might be to reduce your video quality just to get smooth streaming without the buffering and stoppage. So in order to do that, most video quality, whether it's a live TV subscription or something like Plex or even YouTube, you're gonna have the option to reduce your quality. In this case, you're gonna go to your settings on YouTube. So it's gonna be a gears icon to the right, click on that. And right here you can see under quality, you have a couple options. So right now I'm on a 1080p monitor, but if I was getting some issues, I might wanna go down to 720p. Same thing if you're on a 4K device, 4K monitor, and 4K isn't working, you might be able to go to 2K or 1440p or even all the way to 1080p just to make sure your video plays smoothly without any interruptions. Again, for a lot of folks, this is a tough decision to make, but if you have no other options, this is what you're gonna have to go with. But that wraps it up. Before we do, a couple bonus tips for you. So restarting your device does help. Think of it as a little computer. If you had a laptop or a desktop computer, if you keep it running for a year at a time, eventually it's gonna get bogged down. And streaming device is no difference. You wanna make sure you reboot your device once in a while, I'll say once or twice every week, just to make sure it doesn't get bogged down. Another option you can do, most applications are gonna take up space, it's gonna take up a little bit of memory in the background. So if you're not using applications, just go through, uninstall them, guys. If you don't need the applications, you don't use it, I know Amazon even has a feature where it automatically offload applications. That's one of the reasons just to free up your memory and keep your device running smooth. And of course, you wanna make sure your device is up to date, not only for security reasons, but for performing reasons as well. So to make sure your device is up to date, you're gonna to go to My Fire TV, gonna to go to About, and you're gonna to go to Check for Updates. Check right here, you can see my device is up to date. But you wanna do that just to make sure you stay on top of everything with your streaming device. If you need help in the comment section, let me know what you're going through, what device you have, what your issue are. Also, I will be leaving links to the OTG adapter, ethernet adapter, as well as a couple related videos that might help you speed up your device. Of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next